Hello everyone. I'll be very happy if you uh, show your faces. Um, and uh, today uh, we'll have two classes. The first one uh, will be devoted to perception. And uh, the next one is about different instrumental techniques of uh, uh, um, that are used for phonetical investigations in articulation and uh, perception and um, articulation. Uh, so the first one is about perception. I have some links for you. I'll now uh send them uh, via chat do you see my links okay um so i'll i'll refer to these links and be ready to uh to follow them mm. speech perception is uh our first topic today uh we have already discussed articulation and acoustics, and um, the third aspect uh, is perception, and uh, today we'll speak about perception. Mm. Uh, I have three different things about perception uh, that I want you to know. Uh, the first one is the peripheral auditory system, and it is more or less about anatomy and physiology. Uh, the second one is audition, so it's about our physical ability to uh, to hear and to perceive uh, sounds, and perception itself is our ability to uh, somehow perceive speech sounds and uh, process them. So I am interested in three very important questions. Um, it, uh, it's um, Maybe not not questions, but just aspects of how we can um, how we can uh, deal with sounds. When we speak about sounds in the air, so what is sound? Uh, when it is in the air, what is it? Anything? Uh, some acoustic Rage. view of a sound. Hmm? Uh. Air fluctuations. Yeah, some air fluctuations, some uh, oscillations of air pressure, um, something like this. And what is sound for the brain? We don't have just air uh, inside of our heads. Mm, what, do, what do we have uh, in our brains? What is sound uh, inside our heads? What is it? Uh, maybe. Uh, I think I have several answers at the same time. Like maybe some impulses in the brain. 
Uh, what impulses? What kind of impulses? Like uh, reactions in different parts of the brain to the sound. Okay, uh, reactions. And what uh, what kind of reactions is it? Uh, when we have sound uh, in the air, it's um, it's also a reaction. What do we have in our brains? So it's reaction, some impulses. What are these impulses? Okay, signals and neural networks. What is this signal? Uh, I think it is some chemical. Uh, so there's some molecules. I don't know, some substances, uh, neuromediators, I don't know. So, um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think uh, some like neurophysiologist stuff happens here. So it's just chemistry. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, maybe so, it's just pure chemistry, yeah. Uh, we, have, uh, we have some chemistry there and this chemistry produces ele uh, electricity. So we have some electrical impulses. Uh, that was um, what what I want uh, from you. So uh, in the air, sound is some uh, physical uh, physical changes of air pressure, and when it just comes into our heads, it becomes electrical impulses uh, in um, in different structures of our brain. So uh, this is the first miracle of this audition perception thing. Uh, how does this air, uh, air pressure, differences in air pressure, how can this, uh, how can this be possibly changed into electrical signal? So this is the first question. And the next question is how this electrical, uh, electrical impulses uh, can be interpreted as speech sounds. And what is the difference between just, uh, just sounds, any sounds and speech sounds? So we'll have to uh, cover uh, these two um, very important questions in, uh, in this uh, discussion. So let's start with this peripheral auditory system. Uh, the peripheral auditory system consists of uh, three parts. It's outer ear, middle ear, and inner ear. Uh, we have them in two, in two variants. So uh, the right one is uh, this. It is simpler. Uh, outer ear consists of, uh, of what we just call ears or what we see when we look at the mirror. And outer ear also, uh, also includes ear, ear canal. Um, then we have middle ear. Uh, middle ear consists of uh, eardrum, uh, bone chains, and uh, it, it, uh, it ends when uh, cochlea uh, starts. So inner ear uh, consists of cochlea, mm, and then uh, via uh, the auditory nerve, electrical impulses come uh, higher uh, uh, into different uh, brain structures, subcortical structures uh, to the um, auditory cortex. So, uh, when, uh, when the airstream comes into this outer ear, it is just uh, different uh, types of air pressure. So it's just air. And well, when it comes through the middle ear and through the inner ear and uh, comes into the auditory nerve, it is already uh, some, uh, some sequences of uh, electrical impulses. So, here, when uh, here is um, where it all uh, where uh, this miracle happens. So uh, the peripheral auditory system is uh, some kind of uh, is a, is a place where uh, the um, the sound in the air becomes the sound uh, for the brain, and then via auditory nerve it comes to subcortical structures and then to auditory cortex where the perception and linguistic uh, processing uh, takes place. Uh, the peripheral auditory system uh, does three different things. It translates these acoustic signals into neural signals. Uh, at the same time, it performs amplitude compression. 
And the third thing, it performs a kind of Fourier analysis so that uh, we could have, um, in, in our brains, we could have some uh, kind of, uh, spec of some kind of spectrograms um, so that we could um, analyze sounds and understand what is said. Mm, here I have a video for you. Uh, it's the first video. Uh, is audition video. Please um, watch this uh, from the beginning to the end. Uh, I'll just send. Uh, uh, here are the links. If you if you missed them, so now it's audition uh, audition video.
Have you finished with the video? I finished. Uh, well, um, the video shows how this peripheral auditory system works, how this kind of Fourier analysis is performed uh, in the cochlea, and uh, how these acoustic signals uh, tr are translated into neural signals. Uh, now we move on to acoustics and hearing. And um, the first thing I have to say is, uh, about psychoacoustic scales. Mm. You already know that there are some uh, acoustic correlates of, um, mm, of our feelings about sounds. So we have some loudness and we have amplitude that correlates with this loudness. We have uh, different frequencies and we have spectrum and this correlates uh, with the mm, quality of sounds. And um, we have, for example, pitch, and uh, we have this high or low sounds that we uh, are able to, uh, to perceive. Uh, so uh, it, is not, mm, it, it, it does not work exactly uh, as just correlates. Um, there is a, consider a considerable, uh, there are some, um, there are some differences between uh, acoustics and perception. And uh, psychoacoustics is a discipline that uh, describes this, uh, describes these uh, differences. Um, here we can uh, see uh, the sound scale. So it's a scale of perceived loudness that, different, uh, that is different from uh, differences in acoustic intensity. And uh, maybe what is uh, more important for me is uh, a scale of perceived frequency, uh, which is called Bach scale. Um, Bach scale is uh, built on um, on uh, what is called uh, critical critical bands. So uh, uh, it is uh, noticed that different frequencies are perceived in a different way. Mm. Uh, some frequencies are, uh, are distinguishable uh, and some uh, differences are distinguishable and some are not distinguishable and it depends on uh, what frequency uh, it is. Um, here I have two, two charts. Um, now I, I'm going to explain what, uh, what, uh, what we have uh, on these pictures and uh, how it is linked to this Hertz and Bach uh, differences. Um, uh, Garik and I uh, had an experiment. Mm, we tried to uh, we tried to uh, find out uh, what is um, the vari variability in s sound in different languages. And uh, here you can see different languages in different colors. Uh, for example, uh, Russian is uh, something like light blue and Udmurt is uh, like pink. Um, and every uh, box plot is a, is a speaker. Mm, so, uh, and every, every uh, Every dot is uh, a sound. It is one sound. So uh, in the top of uh, in the picture uh, uh, in the picture uh, on the top of this slide, you can see uh, that um, in some languages, uh, uh, spectral characteristics of so can be um, uh, can vary in a, um, in a wide range. So uh, you can see this uh, very long. Um, pink box plot, and uh, you can see that um, in, uh, in, in Russian, uh, different speakers are characterized, uh, different speakers pronounce this S sound differently, and uh, box plots uh, just uh, don't overlap 
sometimes. And um, this high picture is in hertz, and uh, the picture uh, at the bottom is in bark, uh, in, in, the, in the bark scale. And uh, if you compare uh, the picture in hertz and the, the chart in box, uh, you can see that um, some differences that are noticeable in hertz are just not noticeable in this box scale. Uh, and uh, we can conclude that uh, some, some differences that are in higher frequencies uh, are not so important uh, for our perception. Mm, so, uh, and uh, the low frequencies are more important uh, when we try to differentiate between, uh, between different sounds. Mm, the main idea is that Prat is not our ears and uh, if you're interested not only in acoustics, but in how uh, people uh, hear and differentiate between sounds, um, you can also uh, use this psychoacoustic scales and not only this acoustic scales, objective scales. Um, the second thing uh, I will discuss is this connection between perception and uh, perception and phonetics, uh, perception and lexics, uh, and uh, maybe some other things that are connected to perception and influence perception. Mm. Phonetic knowledge uh, appears to influence perception, uh, influence uh, perception and shape uh, perception. We have here two, um, two processes. Uh, the first one is just categorical perception. Uh, the first notion is categorical perception, and the second one is phonetic coherence. Um, there, was, mm, uh, um, th there was an experiment uh, in, uh, that, uh, used, uh, uh, that used da sounds, and, uh, da syllables, and ga syllables. And uh, with changing the third formant and uh, with changing formants, uh, there was a continuum uh, from da to ga sounds. Um, and uh, uh, different, different syllables uh, changed uh, just a little uh, step by step this third formant. And uh, the syllables. Uh, the syllables were, were um, uh, were uh, stimuli uh, in the experiment, and um, uh, people listened to these syllables and uh, had to answer two questions. The first one was um, to write down uh, what they heard. Uh, uh, ga or da or anything else. So just write down what you hear. And next one was to guess uh, uh, are the two sounds that you hear equal or not? Uh, so um, there were only two types of answers, only da and ga. And this continuum uh, was divided into two groups by all um, by all participants of this experiment. Mm. So we have some categories uh, uh, which are shaped by our uh, phonological, um, by our phonetic, ex uh, our phonetic experience, by uh, our phonological, struc uh, phonological structure of our languages, uh, by this uh, inventories, phonetic inventories. Mm. Uh, it is also important that uh, we are matching, uh, we are using uh, both ears to uh, understand what, uh, what, is, uh, what is heard. Um, mm, um, there was a division uh, between uh, left ear stimuli and right ear stimuli. Um, and, uh, you see uh, in the picture that uh, right ears received 
same uh, same sounds in all uh, these different syllables. And uh, the fragment of the third format that was different in these syllables uh, was uh, performed to the left ear uh, of each uh, participant. Mm, well, um, left ear sounds and right ear sounds were uh, collected in some uh, in, in some picture, and uh, and the result was the same as uh, here in this uh, mono sound to uh, for uh, a left ear and and uh, both left and right ears. So we can just match uh, channels, use uh, both ears uh, to um, find out what is the sound. Mm. When we hear uh, syllables, uh, it is not the same as uh, when we hear words. Mm. The, uh, the next experiment uh, was uh, um, it, it, to, uh, for the next experiment, these syllables uh, were um, changed to, um, to, to resemble words. So there were uh, dog and gog syllables, uh, which were uh, changed step by step uh, in, by, the change, uh, by the changes in this uh, third format. And um, there were more uh, dog syllables um, in the interpretations of participants uh, than uh, gog syllables. And uh, the result was different from the result on just syllables uh, because this um, le lexical, uh, uh, lexical items um, have this uh, uh, gravity uh, center for our perception and uh, we tend to interpret some syllable uh, in the way that uh, makes it closer to some existing lexical item. Mm, it is called Gannon effect. The next thing is uh, called phoneme restoration. Um, in the top uh, spectrogram, you can uh, see a word and in the bottom, the uh, sibilant sound S was replaced by uh, by just noise uh, that is not speech but just noise. And when uh, participants heard uh, this word with this noise noise instead of S sound, um, this word uh, was still interpreted as um, this first one. So we, um, mm, we try to understand these lexical units and uh, use all uh, the acoustic keys we have uh, to um, make, this, uh, make the result of our analysis closer uh, to what we have uh, in the lexicon. Mm. So our perceptual systems are tuned by linguistic experience and are influenced greatly by uh, our linguistic experience. And when your linguistic experience is, uh, is different, uh, this uh, categorization and mm, lexi uh, lexical influence uh, differ as well. Uh, it is... Um, we can see this in children's speech and in speech pathology. Um, these categories can be different in uh, different populations. Uh, another thing is uh, called multimodal phenomena or multimodal uh, perception. Uh, here I would like you to, uh, to watch the next video. Uh, Mark Gook, please watch it to, uh, to, to one minute and then uh, oh, we'll move on.
Well, uh, what is uh, what is this McGurk effect? What is this? Can anybody explain what is uh, what was in the video? What is this effect? So this man uh, was uh, um, pronouncing um, uh, the word "ba" two times in the first and in the second video. But uh, in the first video, we saw this man uh, clearly pronouncing "ba," and in the second video. Uh, he was um, pronouncing um, in, in the video, he was pronouncing some other sound like f, but uh, we uh, were listening to the same uh, audio, but um, they assumed that we uh, uh, that we have um, uh, that we have listened uh, for a second time while it was b. Mm. Mm -hmm. Did I did I explain it? Uh, maybe I should. Yeah. So uh, to mm -hmm. to sum up uh, to sum up, uh, they conclude that uh, uh, our visual perception influences influences our audio perception. Yeah. Mm, yes. Thank you. Uh, so our visual perception uh, influences our auditory perception, and we. Uh, not only have uh, this effect in different manners of articulation, like uh, fricatives uh, uh, versus uh, plosives, we can also hear this uh, uh, hear this effect when we have different places of articulation. Uh, we can mm, con we can conf uh, confuse uh, we can be confused by uh, labels and uh, dentals and uh, labels and dentals when we uh, see lips pronouncing uh, something else. So this effect, um, this effect is very important uh, when, uh, when we, uh, just when we speak, mm, some people have, uh, um, different people have, uh, have uh, different, um, just different stages of um, speech development, and uh, some people um, feel great uh, discomfort when they have to um, have to listen to people when they are in the ma in in in, the, in in masks because they just can't see lips, and uh, lips don't help uh, don't help these people to. Um, to understand what is said, and uh, other people uh, have uh, their have their perceptional uh, experience and um, percep perception perceptive skills uh, good enough to uh, to understand what is said, even uh, when uh, they are speaking to a person with uh, with a mask on. Mm. Uh, so we can see that phonetics influences perception, uh, words influence perception, and there is a uh, multimodal uh, multimodal phenomena, multimodal perception that helps us uh, to uh, perceive using different channels uh, as uh, as a as visual information in uh, in addition to uh, auditory information. Mm, so uh, this was this perceptive uh, perceptive uh, part of uh, our discussion. And uh, now I'll uh, just ask you uh, what uh, kinds uh, what maybe uh, what perceptive experiments. Uh, can you um, can you think of um, what what experiment uh, about perception uh, we can uh, carry out to uh, to find out some uh, uh, differences or some processes in our perception? 
Do you mean strictly auditory or any? <laughs> Uh, any uh, any um, questions um, that are connected to perception, to auditory perception, perception, uh, multimodal perception, anything. What kind? Of, what questions can we have uh, in perception, and uh, what experiments can we think of uh, to find out answers to this question, uh, to these questions? Any ideas? Mm, uh, for example, we can think of some differences between sounds or between words or syllables um, that, uh, that we can see when we uh, just analyze acoustics of these syllables or these words or these sounds, but uh, we still don't know, uh, is this difference uh, perceptive is this difference di uh, is this difference important um, for the for the speakers uh, of the language uh, so um, when we see any uh, acoustic uh, acoustic process uh, acoustic processes or uh, acoustic differences uh, we can uh, also check um, its uh, perceptual significance um, and uh, here we had uh, two most uh, most often questions for uh, these perceptual experiments. The first one is just write down what you hear, and the next one is guess. Uh, guess are the two sounds equal or not? Um, uh, uh, even now, or we often use these two questions. Uh, to find answers to different perceptual um, perceptual questions, and the same um, the same procedure um, helped to uh, create this Bach scale. Mm, can you just guess uh, how can we uh, how can we find out what uh, frequencies are? A distinct what what uh, distinctions in uh, frequency are important uh, for us and what distinctions are not important what what differences uh, what what differences are important and what differences are not important mm, just uh, just same questions can help us here uh, we can uh, perform mm, different sounds, sounds of different frequencies, uh, and uh, ask uh, uh, ask the participants to estimate: is it the same sound uh, produced? Uh, is it the same sound played two times, or uh, they are different sounds? And uh, if they are different sounds, what uh, which one is higher uh, or lower? Mm. So. Uh, uh, this kind of experiment uh, helped to just create this uh, psychoacoustic scale and understand what uh, understand that uh, psychoacoustics is not uh, uh, is not the same as just acoustics. So, uh, uh, what's banned on this uh, scale? Actually, it has uh, frequency on mm -hmm. y. Y, <laughs> uh, yeah, and what's band? Uh, in uh, in this vertical axis, we have frequencies in hertz, and uh, in in this uh, horizontal axis, we have bands. Uh, we have box, and these critical bands that are important for uh, what dif different differentiating between. Um, between uh, frequencies. So, um, we, can, uh, we can hear differences between different bands, uh, but inside each band, uh, differences are not important. Uh,
Um, now I think we can move on to uh, different methods of phonetic uh, I see the quest the question about Japanese in in our chat. Japanese uh, do not distinguish l and r. Uh, maybe two people who speaks who speak only Japanese these sounds would be the same. Um, this looks like a uh, like like uh, like some question uh, to a perceptional experiment. So yes. Mm. The next topic is different methods of phonetic investigation. We have already discussed uh, articulation uh, and uh, acoustics, and we had a little uh, a, a, a little uh, class about perception. Uh, but we still don't know how can we study these aspects of um, phonetical structures. Um, we have already discussed Prat and uh, um, other um, other tools to uh, analyze acoustical uh, acoustic features of speech sounds and syllables and words. But uh, how can we uh, how can we study articulation and perception? Um, all instrumental techniques uh, that are connected to uh, to uh, articulation and perception and phonation uh, uh, and all aspects of speech production are searching uh, for the balance between different uh, between different ne necessary things. Uh, we can't have both at the same time. Uh, we can have some safe and comfortable technique uh, which uh, gives us less knowledge. Uh, and we uh, we can have instead uh, an unsafe and uncomfortable technique um, that uh, will give us more knowledge. At the same time, we can have some special purpose techniques and universal uh, techniques uh, that can be used to uh, to find out to find out different things about different aspects of speech production. And the third thing is we can have. Uh, either more detail in space or more detail in time, but not both of them uh, simultaneously. Uh, more detail in space, uh, we call uh, more detail in space, sp spatial uh, resolution, and more detail in time, temporal resolution. Um, for example, X-ray uh, can give us a perfect spatial uh, resolution, but temporal resolution is not is not very uh, is not um, very good. And when we have uh, temp when we have electrophotography, we have good temporal resolution, and we know what happens uh, in uh, every um, every moment of time. But we can have only several uh, several places. Uh, that we uh, control and uh, observe. Mm, some instrumental techniques are comparable to others and uh, others are not comparable. Uh, we can divide all types of instrumental uh, techniques in phonetics in three, uh, in three groups. Uh, one group is imaging tools. Another group is uh, mm, uh, different tools that uh, don't provide any uh, any spatial information at all, and the third group is point tracking tools that are different from both imaging and uh, not imaging tools. Mm. When we just take a look at this list, we can see that uh, uh, that um, different. Uh, different types of techniques that we can see here were not invented for our phonetic, uh, phonetical needs or linguistic needs 
and what are, what are needs they were invented for? What are these? Uh, ultrasound, uh, X-ray, endoscopy. Medical investigations, probably. Yes, uh, most of these types of techniques were invented for medical investigation and are used in uh, uh, in clinical practice. Uh, but we can uh, we can also use them in uh, in our linguistic investigation, in phonetic in phonetic investigations. Mm. Mm. I'll just uh, tell you about some of these uh, some of these techniques uh, that are the, the most popular and uh, the most widely widely used. Uh, the first one is. Uh, uh, is a technique that helps us to measure uh, muscle activation in um, to, to measure muscle activation. Uh, this type of technique is called electromyography or EMG. Uh, in fact, you use this uh, people use this electromyography in clinical practice. Uh, for example, every time uh, you have a, an EEG uh, investigation. Uh, you uh, you have an electromyography as well, so electromyography can uh, can tell uh, which muscles uh, produce electric Im electrical impulses uh, while working and what muscles are are quiet uh, in the moment. So electromyography uh, can help uh, can help you to uh, understand. What parts of your face? Uh, uh, what parts of your face uh, move uh, when you are speaking? Mm, so it can be used in linguistics and in phonetics as an instrumental tool. Mm. You can also measure airflow and uh, air pressure during speech, and mm, pneumatographs uh, are used for this. Uh, it's not an. It's not something new. It was um, used in the, cent uh, in the in the middle of the twentieth century, uh, and it is used now. Uh, uh, and uh, the usage is practically the same. Uh, you uh, put an uh, put put a mask uh, on the mouth and uh, um, or uh, on the nose. And attach uh, this mask to sensors that detect airflow, and uh, it's a nice technique, but it is um, very difficult to compare uh, uh, to compare this uh, speech airflow uh, in different people. Mm. Sorry, uh, how can one tell anything with this thing in his mouth? Um, it's not, it's not an easy task. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are, there are techniques that, uh, that are easily comparable, uh, with, uh, uh, just free speech and others are not so, so nice. Uh, so here, uh, here you can, uh, you, you cannot be so, uh, so, so free in your movements, and I, I think I'll, uh, I'll I'll find some I'll find some video uh, for you uh, when uh, this when the slides uh, when I'll prepare uh, when I um, prepare the slides for the for the website I'll uh, provide some video uh, to understand how uh, it is even possible. Mm. The next thing is called electro electroglottography. So here you can see this little monkey with a, with a collar uh, in uh, in its neck, and uh, electrodes are embedded in this collar, and uh, this uh, collar can measure the electrical resistance between electrodes when. Uh, when the glottis is uh, closed, uh, electricity passes uh, through uh, through this uh, through uh, larynx 
much easily uh, and uh, when the glottis is open and when air comes free uh, uh, when air uh, when the air stream goes uh, through the open uh, glottis uh, the electricity can't uh, pass easily and the resistance is uh, higher uh, this technique is non-invasive uh, so it is more or less uh, safe and easy to use and it can show the degree of closure of uh, closure in glottis and it has high temporal resolution so you can uh, see what happens in each second uh, each millisecond uh, but uh, at the same time you can't uh, you can see the degree of opening uh, because uh, the resistance is the same uh, when uh, with different uh, with different um, different degrees of opening. Mm. You can't also uh, locate uh, this opening and uh, see how the larynx works as a whole. So here you can uh, you can see the chart with the this changes in uh, changes in uh, uh, in uh, in the configuration of glottis. Here you you have different glottis configurations. So it is open uh, in, in the beginning of this uh, cycle, and then it it is closed, and then it is open uh, again. So we have this. Uh, Curve that shows uh, the degree of closure uh, in the glottis. Mm. Uh, the next technique, uh, the next very important technique, is an endoscopy. I think we can uh, here. I uh, I can refer to a video uh, endoscopy video. Please watch this video now and then. Or we'll move on. Do, uh, uh, does everyone has this video about endoscopy? Mm -hmm.
Have you seen the video? Have you seen this uh, laryngoscopy uh, endoscopy? Yes. So how does it work? What is this man doing uh, in the video? What is happening? Uh, well, this endoscope uh, is uh, uh, endoscope. Uh, it has a camera on it, and so we can uh, we can see the larynx, uh, the vibration of vocal uh, of vocal folds. Um, the first time, uh, the first time she sings. We can see uh, the movements uh, of vocal folds, and then uh, he uh, uses a stroboscope light, and uh, and then we can see these movements. So um, the uh, this technique allows us to uh, allows uh, physicians to um, to estimate um, the status of larynx. Uh, and uh, find problems with the larynx and uh, phoneticians can use this uh, technique uh, to uh, understand how larynx works and what uh, is happening in the glottis. Uh, what is good in endoscopy is dynamics and high temporal resolution. Uh, but at the same time, we just can't observe vertical variation in, uh, we can't see uh, whether larynx goes up or down. Um, and sometimes uh, endoscopic, uh, endoscopic studies require uh, anesthesia and medical supervision, so you can't just uh, perform endoscopy uh, without uh, medical uh, education. Mm. There are still techniques uh, that we can use in our ordinary life, that we use in our ordinary life. One of these techniques is just video recording. We can uh, record videos and... Uh, so, uh, can mm -hmm. I ask, I didn't understand, do we need anesthesia or not? Uh, sometimes you, you, you can need anesthesia and sometimes uh, you cannot. Uh, when you use this uh, 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 approach via, uh, via nose, as uh, we, just, uh, we just have seen in the video, you don't need, uh, you, you don't need anything. But uh, if you have to, uh, if you have to go, uh, like we can see on this on this picture, uh, it seems to me that medical su supervision with anesthesia is uh, is necessary. But I think uh, we can uh, uh, we can we can find out uh, or, uh, we should investigate more to uh, uh, to answer this question. Uh, you can record video to uh, find out what is happening uh, with lips, but uh, you just uh, can't see what is happening uh, deeper in our oral cavity and in our nasal cavity, but you can use video and audio at the same time and uh, compare them. Mm, and for example, we can uh, distinguish between different uh, uh, different types of roundness in vowels or uh, labelization in consonants as well. Mm. There are several techniques uh, that, uh, that are called point tracking techniques and one of them is called optotrack. Uh, in this uh, scary picture you, uh, you see as uh, diodes are attached uh, to the face and uh, and to the, to the lips, 
um, cameras are tracking uh, movements of um, movements, uh, eye, eye movements and movements uh, of lips and, and face. Um, in uh, point tracking techniques, we have uh, we have excellent spatial resolution uh, and temporal resol resolutions as well, but uh, this technique is uh, very expensive and requires uh, laboratory uh, equipment. So uh, it is used only in, uh, uh, only uh, not everywhere. Uh, it, it, is, it is not used everywhere and uh, it, it is still very expensive. Mm. Now I think we can uh, have a break and uh, meet here in 10 minutes.
Uh, let's continue our talk. Uh, now we move on to uh, techniques that help us to understand how articulation works. Um, and uh, there are two types of um, these techniques according to uh, how, uh, how, how long we have them uh, in, in our scientific life. So we have a, a traditional type of uh, palatography and linguography uh, that uh, uses uh, uh, traces on the palate in palatography or traces on the tongue in linguography. Um, and uh, this is some uh, traditional uh, technique that can be used uh, in the field and was used uh, recently. Uh, and it requires no equipment. You uh, only need some, uh, uh, okay, no equipment and uh, in, uh, but there are uh, negative, uh, negative sides of, of this technique and uh, it is not a very uh, pleasant experience. Uh, so uh, I think uh, it's now time to watch uh, palatography video. There are several uh, videos about palatography, uh, and I just uh, want you to, um, to watch the one from the chat uh, to the point of two minutes. So now please watch, uh, watch the video. Well, this is how um, this traditional palatography and linguography works. And that was palatography. And uh, you see that this, um, this type of technique has its uh, constrictions and its problems. And uh, now we have uh, electropalatography, which uses um, the same idea so we uh, find traces uh, of uh, tongue movements on the palate, but now this uh, palate is um, is artificial and uh, uses electrodes uh, to mm, to trace uh, movement uh, in electropalatography. Uh, you can have dynamic picture, not only one picture of this trace, but uh, the uh, changing uh, changing of um, of articulation. Uh, electropalatography gives you excellent uh, temporal resolution, and you can um, you can add ultrasound to electropalatography 
and uh, it will give you some uh, complex picture. But there are problems um, with these uh, artificial palettes. Uh, they are made uh, for each person as all palettes are different. And uh, these inserts are very expensive. So uh, you can, uh, you need lots of money to make uh, an investigation of uh, articulation in one person. Mm. And uh, it's also very time consuming. Uh, look uh, what is a palatal insert with electrodes like uh, and this uh, small uh, small things are electrodes and the pictures in the bottom of the slide is what we get as a result of this electro uh, palatographic uh, investigation. So uh, each uh, each picture is uh, some sequence of uh, black and white uh, black and white uh, uh, cells. Um, that are responsible for uh, contact or no contact of uh, the tongue with the palate. Now I uh, would like you to uh, to watch the next video, which is electropalatography. Uh, it's just a pronunciation uh, accompanied by these electropalatographic pictures. So please watch this video and uh, return uh, to me. Uh, where is uh, in, in this vid in this video uh, you, you can see the picture uh, what is uh, uh, what is in the bottom of the picture and what is in the top of the picture where is uh, the apex and where are teeth in this picture do you understand yeah apex is uh, high is above and uh, so the root of the tongue is uh, below. Mm, yes. Uh, so uh, you can uh, you can see what is dynamic uh, change in articulation, but you just have these electrodes and uh, and, and nothing uh, between these electrodes can be registered using this technique. Mm, the next thing um, is X-ray videos that were uh, widely used uh, uh, in, in the last century uh, by mm, different phoneticians. Mm, in X-ray videos, uh, uh, the high frequency radiation is used. This radiation uh, passes uh, through um, uh, uh, passes through tissues and um, allows you to uh, look at the picture and uh, the denser is uh, the tissue, the harder to pass through uh, and the lighter uh, color. So high density tissues like bones absorb X-rays and so they are white in the picture. Uh, less uh, dense tissues like muscle or fat uh, absorb less X-rays, so they are presented in the shades of gray. And um, air is uh, penetrated by X-rays, so it's uh, just black. Uh, X-ray uh, X videos were wi widely used and they can show the entire head uh, and uh, 
many of these old videos are uh, okay, and we know uh, more. Uh, we know much about uh, articulation due to these uh, X-ray videos, but uh, uh, it still exposes subjects uh, to radiation, which is not uh, very useful uh, for your body. Mm. And you can also have CT, uh, which is computer tomography, uh, to investigate speech. And it is the same X-ray, but in uh, three dimensions. It's uh, taken around a uh, rotational axis. Uh, and it is uh, good in uh, its high spatial uh, resolution, but it has poor temporal resolution and it still irradiates a person. Uh, with this uh, ionizing radiation, and uh, this uh, makes risk of causing cancer higher, uh, as well as uh, X-ray videos. So CT and X-ray are now uh, not so widely used in phonetic uh, in, in phonetic studies. Mm, ultrasound at the same time uh, is uh, uh, is now very popular. So uh, ultrasound, uh, tongue imaging, uh, or just ultrasound, mm, uh, I think we can. Uh, I think we can watch a video about this. Um, mm, ultrasound technique uses uh, ultrasound uh, that uh, passes through different types of tissues uh, in a different way. Uh, so uh, if uh, ultrasound uh, faces bones, uh, air just doesn't go back and uh, bones are not imaged. Uh, air, uh, is, uh, mm, air is uh, goes back sharply uh, when, uh, ultrasound, uh, when ultrasound goes, uh, so uh, it is white in the images. Mm -hmm. And uh, in uh, ultrasound imaging of articulation, uh, you can see uh, the tongue in a white line. Mm -hmm. Please watch the video about uh, ultrasound uh, tongue imaging, just two, uh, two minutes, 35 seconds. Well, it, it would be nice if you um, can watch this video uh, to the end um, after after our class. So no, uh, now uh, it's uh, it's okay with this uh, small fragment, uh, so that it, so you can see that this ultrasound imaging that is uh, absolutely um, that is uh, abs absolutely safe uh, for participants and 
not in uh, not invasive uh, and uh, very funny for uh, the participants. Uh, so uh, ultrasound imaging is uh, really nice, and uh, you can mm, uh, you can uh, you can have high uh, temporal resolution and uh, compare these pictures or videos with sound recording, and even with uh, even with uh, videos of speaking people like uh, you just uh, seen uh, in the video. Uh, and uh, it's uh, really fun, mm, um, but uh, at the same time, uh, when you use this ultrasound tongue imaging, you can uh, you can't uh, see what happens uh, what happens with the glottis, uh, and you can only see the tongue and and uh, chin, and uh, the palate is not so. Uh, is, uh, and uh, palate and teeth uh, are not so uh, so well uh, seen. Uh, next uh, very important technique is magnetic resonance imaging, MRI. Um, and MRI is uh, also used in uh, in medical uh, Investigations and in uh, phonetic uh, in, in phonetic uh, research as well. Uh, MRI pictures are very um, look very much uh, look uh, practically the same as uh, X-ray videos, but the principles of MRI uh, and of X-ray uh, videos are uh, absolutely different. Uh, in uh, x in x-ray studies uh we have this radiation uh, high frequency radiation th that passes uh through the uh, through the body and uh gives us these pictures and uh in mri scanners um these mri scanners influence uh, it, uh mri scanners mm, create a strong magnetic field that influences uh, hydrogen uh, atoms in uh, in the body and changes uh, hydrogen behavior. So uh, you can see uh, it it is uh, it it can uh, it gives a, a chance to to see the picture. So MRI is not um, is not uh, so. Um, mm, uh, is it, it, is not invasive. Uh, MRI is is not so uh, dangerous uh, for people as uh, X-ray imaging is, uh, and uh, you can see all the vocal tract and pictures are just amazing. But um, these MRI scanners are very expensive, and uh, it, it is. Uh, MRI scanners require uh, special equ equipment uh, to uh, mm, to screen this uh, magnetic field that it produces that the scanner produces. Uh, it makes terrible noise, and uh, the participant should uh, lie uh, should lie down in this uh, scanner, uh, which. Uh, influences uh, articulation. Um, besides MRI uh, pictures, uh, MRI imaging has low temporal, temporal resolution, so uh, you can't be, uh, you can't always be uh, sure that uh, you see every, um, every change in articulation. Mm, mm, the, uh, there is only one uh, video left. Uh, just uh, watch two or three sentences of this MRI uh, video. It's the, the last video, so uh, please watch it. Uh, two or three sentences are enough.
What is the language? Finnish. Mm -hmm. uh, so MRI is widely used for uh, articulation, um, for uh, studying articulation, but it is very time consuming and uh, mm, is very expensive. And uh, ultrasound is not so expensive. Uh, you can have a portative uh, ultrasound machine that uh, can be taken to, uh, to the field and you can use this ultrasound imaging in even in the field research. Uh, well, uh, of course you can't uh, have an MRI uh, scanner with you when you go to the field. Mm. Uh, one more group of uh, instrumental techniques is uh, connected to brain research. So you can uh, you can study uh, neural response uh, of different brain structures uh, to different stimuli. It, it can be uh, perceptional uh, studies in, uh, on perception or uh, on uh, speech production, um, anything that uh, anything uh, that is connected to speech. Um, the first uh, of these instrumental techniques um, in uh, studying brain uh, structures uh, or brain uh, role in, uh, in speech is EEG, electroencephalography. It uh, uses electrodes that are connected to, uh, to the skin of, of your head um, as uh, it is done in the, uh, in the left picture, or you can have um, a, a special equipment uh, like uh, this red one with uh, electrodes on it uh, on the right. Um, uh, EEG can give you a, um, perfect uh, temporal resolution uh, and uh, it can uh, show you what uh, show you the uh, uh, show you electrical uh, electrical uh, activity electrical uh, processes uh, in uh, in all brain at the same time and uh, Mm, it can be used in, uh, uh, in studies on perception. Uh, at the same time, you uh, can't uh, use EEG in, uh, I think we can't use EEG when a person is uh, pronouncing uh, words or phrases uh, because this uh, muscle uh, activity in, in muscles uh, influences uh, a lot uh, this EEG signal. Mm, and uh, we also uh, don't have uh, good uh, spatial resolution as uh, we receive signal from different electrodes, but we don't uh, know uh, exactly what is the source of, uh, of this signal. Mm. In uh, linguistic studies, uh, uh, fMRI is also used, which is functional magnetic uh, resonance imaging. Uh, functional magnetic resonance imaging shows uh, what, uh, what structures receive uh, more blood, uh, receive more oxygen uh, in the moment, so we can see what structures are activated uh, under uh, this or that uh, verbal task or uh, perceptional task or uh, under the influence of some visual or, or auditory stimuli. Mm -hmm. It is uh, often mm, it is often, often compared with the uh, PET, which is uh, auditory emission tomography. Mm, PET scans are quieter and uh, motion is not so, uh, uh, motion does not influence um, the uh, influence pictures so much as in uh, fMRI, but uh, uh, 
A PET requires introduction of uh, radioactive isotope, uh, isotopes into blood, uh, so that you can have, uh, so that you could have the picture. Uh, so fMRI is uh, is much more much more safe, but uh, you can't use uh, MRI and fMRI when you have some uh, mm, if you ha have some metallic items inside of your body. So uh, in these uh, cases, uh, CT uh, or X-ray uh, are used. Uh, here I have two pictures from. Uh, uh, from uh, the, the last book in this list. Mm, here we have uh, different instrumental techniques on one mm, on one slide. Uh, and I uh, highly recommend all, all these books, uh, uh, especially the last one, Articulatory Phonetics, which has uh, which provides lots of information about uh, instrumental techniques uh, with uh, illustration uh, illustrations and uh, further further reading. Mm, so I think it's all uh, I wanted uh, I wanted to tell you. So if you have some questions, uh, please ask. Mm. Um, if there are no questions, I think I can say goodbye and thank you. And uh, if you have some questions, please uh, write uh, and send me a letter. So um, thank you so much. Uh, goodbye. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.